Unit 8 Recording 11 Agricultural Export Management Before a farm or an agribusiness starts investing in the development of their export capacity or certification, they have to answer the following questions. Whether they want to export themselves and stay independent, or whether they choose to work with an exporter and enter into a partnership and benefit from the services the exporter has to offer. With regard to exporters, the question to answer is whether they want to develop their own production capacity or they source their products from individual farmers or farm organisations. Having answered the questions farm organisations and exporters first have to carry out a preliminary self-evaluation of their strengths and weaknesses. Second, analyse the opportunities and challenges presented by the market. Thirdly, select the type of supply chain in which to operate, as well as the certification scheme best suited for their organisation. To carry out a preliminary self-evaluation of the strengths and weaknesses of the organisation and product the 5M approach is a good strategy to adopt. According to the 5M approach, organisations are evaluated on the basis of five variables. Men, means, methods, machines and measurables. And the questions to answer are the following. Men. What are the capabilities and expertise of the employees? Means. What is the financial situation of the business? Methods. What are the managerial methods and professionalism of the organisation? What is the ownership structure of the company? Family company, limited liability company, subsidiary, etc. Machines. What is the production capacity? Measurables. What are the performance indicators? How has the sales volume developed over time? What is the profit per unit slash return on investments or labour productivity? How do these indicators compare with the competitors' ones? Applying the method in an organisation should decide what the main strengths and weaknesses for each M variable are. In general, businesses tend to concentrate their analysis on their practical experiences and only identify weaknesses after they encountered problems. However, unknown weaknesses are usually more problematic than known weaknesses. Remember the rule of thumb. If you haven't done it yet, your lack of experience is a weakness. The next step is conducting a market research, which includes the product, the market, demand and price. Other characteristics, organic and fair trade markets, for those agribusinesses which decide to target those, and the competition. With regard to product, it is very important to research differentiated market demands because the agribusiness may have to adapt production methods to cater for them. An important question is whether in case of a decline in demand the organisation has the possibility to change their product without too many investments, and even if a farm cannot switch products, there may still be different demands for different varieties, qualities, grades, etc. Shortly afterwards, an organisation needs to know in which market they are likely to find a buyer to make an informed decision about investments. Markets can be differentiated according to their region, the West African market, the European market, the North American market, their country, the Italian market, the German market, or their sales level, the wholesale market, the retail market. Within the retail market of a specific country, different types of markets can be distinguished, such as the market for branded products, the market for supermarkets' own label products, markets for high and low price products, markets for certified products, including organic and fair trade, and other niche markets which often have their own characteristics and do not necessarily follow the general market trends. Other market characteristics that may have an important impact upon your business include the distance to the market, transport time, the language skills of importers, cultural similarities or differences that may influence the relations between business partners and barriers to trade including import tariffs, import restrictions based on rules of origin, labelling requirements, e.g. nutritional labelling, food safety and phytosanitary regulations and traceability requirements. Analysing what the competition is doing is as important as what the market is doing. Here the two basic questions to answer are if there are many other suppliers trying to sell the same product and if your product is over or under supplied. SWOT analysis is a much used strategic planning method to evaluate the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats involved in a project or business venture. It involves specifying the objective of the project and identifying the internal and external factors that are favourable and unfavourable to achieving that objective. 
The SWOT analysis also provides insights into the strengths and weaknesses of an agribusiness and allows to assess which supply chain arrangement is most suitable for the organization. There are many different types of international supply chains, among those are individual farmers to local trader to exporter to importer, individual farmers under contract to exporter to importer, outgrower group under contract to exporter to importer, farmer association plus subcontracting exporter for export services to importer, farmer association to importer, individual farmer plantation equals exporter to importer. This is a very simplified overview as it does not include the suppliers of inputs to farmers or the wholesalers and retailers to which the importers sell their products and omits the more complex chains of processed and composite products. Now that an agribusiness knows which market they want to target, they should develop a work plan to get there. The work plan includes the following elements. Setting out a number of clear measurable targets, developing a step-by-step -step strategy, including a timeline, to obtain these targets, clarifying responsibilities, who does what, evaluating costs. The contents of the plan checklist may vary according to the product, perishable or non-perishable. The value added by the organisation, processing, whether they export directly or sell to an exporter, etc. A checklist for export activities may easily run for several pages. Train produce agents slash harvesting teams, plan target volume, discuss buying terms with farmers, obtain pre-financing, inform buyers on volumes and start contract negotiations, buy packaging material, send samples to buyers, finalise pre-financing and contracts with buyers, secure transportation to packaging facility and obtain shipping or flight schedules, hire and train temporary workers, harvest and buy produce, label for traceability and record transactions, transport the packaging facility and secure shipping and flights, final sorting and packaging, label for traceability, keep records, ensure products, transport to airport, offload and transit storage and fumigation, export documents, phytosanitary documents, certificate of origin, EUR movement certificate, loading, send bill of lading to buyer and make request for payment. Upon payment, pay back pre-financing and loans, pay taxes and any outstanding payments to farmers and service providers. Request feedback on delivery from buyer, quality, timeliness, etc. Locate source of problems, investigate and solve, calculate profit and loss. The marketing efforts are not over once an agribusiness has found a buyer, signed the contract and delivered their goods. Their trade partners should feel supported and backed up at all times. That's why the company has to appoint an account or area manager to keep the relation with their buyer alive.